you guys. Welcome hey, to uh, welcome to 111 Mina Gallery Studios. Um, we have a series called Tharts, which is thoughts on art, and we are so <laughs> excited here to welcome Stacy Ransom and Jason Mitchell to our show. Hi, you guys. Hello. Hello. Like we have them from their home studio. Fun to get a peek in on on where you create. <laughs> True, this cra the crazy, the crazy. Yeah. All right, there it is. That's where the magic happens. Yeah. Yeah, this is where this is uh, Stacy's art space. Yeah. Specifically. Yes. Yeah, we have we we work from home, so we chopped our house up into all these like zones. So we converted our garage to be a studio, and it, it's actually we we have a, a garage that's got side by side doors, so they don't it's not a roll up door, so we can really like crack it and let let light in only oh, nice. if we want, so we can light control it which is nice. One of the walls we made kind of like a, just like a flat wall for like shooting against and kind of like re-engineered some of the, the lighting and the paint to kind of reflect and, and do a good job with that. It also then has like a deep sink. So when we do messy work, you know, it's easy to clean up and you know, yeah. uh, fold out tables. So that way, you know, if we need to expand our table space. It's really awesome. So like when we do encaustics or anything kind of messy. Well, and encaustics, um, they got the outgas so yeah. then we can we can outgas it from the right. garage area the, or the studio space yeah so and then this this room is where i just make all like our props or if i'm make, making anything like so around the room are some of the props from like i can pull them out and show you for the various projects we oh, made. yeah even one of the couple of pieces that uh from 111 yeah yeah um and then there's um and then our his his studio space is also like our more controlled printing because we, we yeah. do all our own printing so awesome. while this place is bright, my place is dark. And this place is messy. <laughs> and there's like a, literally, I had to put down like a layer of- Oh yeah, mine's of, clean. <laughs> yeah, but mine is literally messy. Like if, like you, at any given time, you're like, oh my gosh. Like I'm in my, I'm in like, like this nice sweater and already I'm like, is there paint anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, more in mind, so there's more printing, yeah, cutting the papers and, and doing light controlled, uh, retouching and also printing uh, quality, you know, quality control and stuff like that so yeah nice so is your um studios located in san francisco or in the bay area yeah yeah yes. we're in uh we're in san francisco yeah kind of in the center right in the center which is yeah. really nice oh awesome it's, it's kind of yeah. yeah it's weirdly you know the san francisco has its different neighborhood so it's almost like we're a little burby anyway, yeah but uh yeah but still close enough that you can you know go somewhere when i first like this we both lived in san francisco now for like over 20 years so when oh, i first wow. moved here i was like living downtown it was awesome and i remember i went to a party like really near where i live now uh -huh. and i just remember being like man where am i I'm not <laughs> Uber, man. No, I right the pre-uber pre-lift days when you'd yeah. be out at parties and you're just like how am i gonna get <laughs> yeah and, and now i live here so <laughs> nice. there's just more space if you just leave the downtown area and you move out then you get more yeah. So. Well, we see a little peek behind you of what you guys, you know, what you guys are up to. So you're a still in motion creative team mm -hmm. um, that features the talents of director, photographer, Jason Mitchell, and set designer and digital artist, Stacey Ransom. And together you create highly detailed and visually lush photographic and digital art scenarios and portraits. Your work is narrative in nature and draws upon the darker undercurrent that exists within all aspects of society. Um, so that's amazing. Did we write that? You did write <laughs> that, and it is really good. <laughs> I actually like what else you wrote, which was so funny. And we aim to blur the lines between photography, digital art, and classical painting to create worlds that cannot exist and quite possibly shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Our motto, our ongoing motto, has been um, gravity and common sense are for suckers. <laughs> Really excited and so glad that you guys gave us the time to go over some of your pieces yeah. and talk about them and, and to show to people. And I also saw that you had done some prior interviews, which we'll share with everybody with Evil Tender, Varnish, they're so awesome, mm -hmm. Don't Panic, Cartwheel, and then some behind the scenes work with um, High Fructose. So yeah. juxtapose and cartwheel. So that is great. And we'll, we'll put post those up as well. But um, just to remind people, if they want to see your art, the best place to go is art.ransomminchell.com. Yes. Great. Any other places that people should be looking? Is that the best? Well, you know, you can follow us on Instagram or whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of times that's been our kind of 
main plug-in for social media so far these days uh, is still Instagram when we get to it. It's hard kind of like, you know, figuring out where you want a presence. For certain, all of our art ends up on our website, you know, and that's yeah. been a lot more, you know, uh, contains, as soon as we get a piece done, we try to put it up there right away. Right. Um, you know, and so what's your Instagram handle? So we get Ransom you. underscore Mitchell. Great. Awesome. Okay, well, let's just dive into some of these pieces. You know, I really, really implore people to look at the website because you want to see everything and all the different themes that they've done, which are really neat. And we'll hit some of those. So the first one we're going to start with is um, kind of going to go in a chronological order to see how you guys have changed over the years. But we're starting here in 2009 with Up to No Good. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was actually shot here. In our, in our in our in our garage home studio, studio our before home studio. it was our home studio <laughs> yeah and so it, it it's it shows you actually that and and we are a good example of you actually don't need huge spaces to do work like i think to do sometimes, interesting things yeah. yeah sometimes we get stuck in the like oh i don't have the right space i don't have the right tools i don't have the right thing and that's kind of nonsense because right. whatever you want you just you just sort of scale it and our and our work is really about like how much is we've made spaces much, much bigger than we could have ever possibly built in reality. And so that's when, that was when we were first starting to work together. And we had been working on films separately. He had been a cinematographer, director. I was doing, like you said, set design, prop design. And we kept working on films together and, and realizing like, wow, I really, I really like your style. Like we should do more together. And then you suggested. Yeah, I, I thought that, you know, it was basically one of the things that was happening on the films when we were working together was that Stacey would spend a lot of time working on something and then I would like blow by it with a camera and that was that, you know, it's like fuzz, yeah. you know, fuzzy out of focus in the background. So a lot of the work that she was doing was important, but not really featured. So, and then we started working on some of our own projects around that time and in the course of like working on our own projects that's when we said you know I think we're going to get a lot more mileage out of the work that we can do together if we switch over and make uh, still images and so then we can do a lot more effects wise and uh, create much more Im imagery that's a lot truer to what we want to make you know sometimes in films it's so hard to like really incorporate all the different details that get in there but if you're just shooting one image, then it's a lot, you can spend a lot more time focused on what you know you're going to shoot. And honestly, the bottom line is it's, it's the cost, yeah. the cost of making things. The cost of making films is, ex, is exorbitant. It's like, it's impossible for an independent person to realize like these, like you look at it, like Game of Thrones or you look at any of the superhero movies, which like, that's our aesthetic. We love that. And but you know, there's there's thousands of people that have gone into making those films and millions upon millions of dollars. So yeah. we had that same predicament where we like we had all these great ideas and and we were trying to make films, but we couldn't. We just we didn't have the resources. So like well, you just, look at this this piece that you made and you guys have made like a piece of cinematic you know beauty. I mean, this looks like it's from a very highly produced ten trillion dollar film. You know, that's what well, you guys have done could, here. Yeah, there is some some of that so like we would when we approach our work we often bring in we treat it the same way as a film that will bring in crew so we like we come up with the general aesthetic like we've talked about that there's a lot of ideas that are on the floor that never make it so like we both have to agree like we'll pitch our ideas to each other and kind of once we decide on something then we'll make a creative treatment and again we both come from from commercial work or or ad, so advertising so we're used to having to communicate our ideas to other people mm -hmm. so then we'd bring in makeup artists hairstylists wardrobers and 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 help us like this is what we want this is our stuff this is what we're going for but then also like letting the other creative people come to the table with their own ideas Right. Like, well, I hear you that you want this like octopus woman, or I hear you want tatters. So this is this is what I think, and and then we can work with those people back and forth, and then but ultimately, like we're all working towards the same goal, this creative treatment. Yeah. So then we something that you know, a film is going to cost a short film. You can take ten thousand dollars, and that's not going to get you very far. But for a for a photo, you can take two thousand dollars, and that's going to like holy cow, you can make amazing stuff. Right. And then, and then it's just like, what do you do with films? How do you get them out to the world? Like, we're not a studio, we're independent people. So then you're having to go to film festivals and... 
it's yeah, hard. a lot of them don't want you to show it until they get to show it, and you know, it just becomes this whole like guarded process, and all your stuff tends to come out later, and and then when they do show it, it's not like you can monetize it. You know, it all becomes a stepping stone for something else, which just you know, as opposed to creating a piece of art, then everybody wants to see it, you know, and then you can show it everywhere, and it's really it's a really lightweight piece to go around and share with everybody and tell a story. And it's really a little too easy sometimes to share that yeah. <laughs> somebody but, slaps their own thing right. on it. <laughs> that's what we do. And that, that's something we do a lot. I'm sure every artist does with people yeah. taking your work and appropriating it. That's a whole other conversation. Right. But, you know, this is like 10 years ago. So this is, this is like pre Instagram. Like we're, there's, there's, there's very, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm work curious out about that. that point. With yeah. This Instagram was timeline. just kind of kicking up. Yeah. With this timeline yeah. with this piece in 2009, Everyone had kind of completely switched probably to digital by now, right? And so did are you using film or are you using digital for taking? Oh, yeah. no, we were digital. We were that digital because yeah. a, okay. a lot of our work was, you know, uh, going to be post processing intense. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just at the outset, like going digital capture meant like that just makes sense for us. And again, our that's our, that's our world. So I, I'm an original Photoshop user. I've been using Photoshop since it was invented. And like, we both are super comfortable with digital programs because again, we've worked commercially. So it's just, it was just, it was seamless for us. We're like, oh yeah, we don't have to develop film and deal with the chemicals and all that stuff. Like, yeah, let's do that. Well, the fact that you can make digital look like film, you know, yeah. that was the goal and that you can do that because that is so complicated. You know, there's nothing that drives me more crazy now when I'm watching something that's like HD and it looks like I'm there and it's reality. I'm like, I don't want to be a reality. I want a cinematic look. You know, I want that cool cinematic feeling, yeah. you know, contrast. Yeah. I don't want to have the just people, I don't mean the front room, you know, that's well, not. It's interesting you say that because I feel like our, the way that we've always approached the, our digital work, the, and the reason it, it starts to become cinematic is because we're unafraid to destroy things. And I feel like less and less this is happening. So I feel like more people are sort of understanding how you can really crunch up your pixels and make them look messier. But life in general is messy. Shadows are messy and light is messy. Like, and, and our eyes get used to that and we mush it all together. But in digital work, it's perfect. It's so perfect. And, and, if, and if people aren't taking the time to go in and, and rough up edges or make things dirty, then it has this kind of like antiseptic polished quality that I don't personally like. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like you're in a hospital under those bright neon lights. Yeah, yeah it doesn't so All happen. along, like we've always been messing up. Like I, when I would paint a set, then the first thing would be like, all right, let me go make it dirty and make the corners dirty. And then, and then when we started doing it, bringing our work in digitally, it was the same thing of just like taking it into Photoshop and finishing it by like painting on top of it. Yeah. So when people are like, your, fa your work feels like paintings, we're like, well, it's because it kind of is. Like we are painting in Photoshop right. with our a lot of the, the digital that we, stuff that we create becomes the underpainting. Yeah. And then it gets right. a whole lot of look on top of it, layering and, and you know, even using some of the pass-throughs and stuff like that. So that way it, it glows through like an underpainting should. Yeah. And then we're sure the way we build in the in the earlier days when we were actually building sets and building these huge sets, that was great. But then we were always like locked into like that's it. That's the view. That's it. That's because we couldn't afford to build these huge spaces. We would build the scene, but then we couldn't get a lot out of it. And when we started to transition and we were, we decided, well, let's build our stuff uh, in, in digital. Mm -hmm. Let's build our, build our spaces digitally. We started with just making objects like, and some of the things like with, with Ron Turner's piece where he's got all the beard, like we couldn't have possibly done that. So we knew in he's advance. He's got a great beard, but not, you know. But not that <laughs> crazy. And we knew in advance we were going to do that in CG. And then some of the other few pieces you pulled where there was the Maharishi, she's over a bed of nails. Like that's all, we made all those objects. We made the heart and we made all those things later. Yeah. And so then that went so well of merging humans with the digital world that we then started to just make the spaces digitally too. Wow. So we had gone from like working on our here in our house and our studio here. And then we got a big studio and we were building all these sets. And then more and more, we stopped building sets. Right. And then at some point we were like, why do we have this big studio? Like, <laughs> go back and 
work in my house so I can stay in my jammies all day. Right, right. <laughs> you, were, you were so uh, way ahead of COVID. You were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> we really were. Yeah, we really so were. So then, yeah, so we just more and more, we, but we still treat it the same way. So we still have like the space and we still like, he'll create the space and then I decorate the space and we have, we'll go wardrobe. We might look at other other designers we might talk with our friends like oh what can we do to make this wardrobe better so we're yeah the cg space has gotten really it's it's so vast now these days that we each approach it in a different way so i do it more of like an architectural slash math lighting kind of formulaic kind of thing where uh, and then that's what we use to build out some of the spaces whereas opposed to like stacy does more sculptural and you know kind of detail still getting you know as if digital fingers are in there kind of doing their thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so with this so this first one up to no good with two, in 2009 it looks like you guys do things in a series so it seems like you have a story yes. that goes along with yes. each of yeah. these paintings and it becomes multiple paintings yes. so so is it so is there usually a certain amount of paintings or you just kind of go with it until your story's told yeah yeah it's more like you know what we can kind of ruminate on a story kind of kick out some ideas sometimes not everything gets finished uh but we try to do it as you know kind of push into different corners as much as we can to try and just maximize the efforts of going into something and really exploring something getting as much meat out of it as we can um because it's interesting because it, and then you know consequently a lot of times when we walk away from something even if there may have been something left on the table it just we you know gets cleared back. off so right yeah, yeah we never go back but yeah like it's a little insight just... into the story of a uh, of this series and the title okay. of this series that no good came from yeah it kind of the the it was uh about like these kids who were you know at this kind of like fancy party and wanted to just they didn't belong there so they escaped into the back rooms uh, but they were in this other kind of uh, world that they didn't really belong in, but were brought along to. And so then they just found themselves in, in, you know, like disappearing into the nethers of this like old house. And then we kind of just pushed cool. it further to make it a little bit more, you know, if surreal and ethereal and, and, you know, in nature, not out, you know, out, yeah. Yeah, no, I see in this piece, she's got this super cool, creepy doll. There's also this, like this cherub head in the back. Um, yeah. But she does look like she fits into the, you know, the beautifulness of Tim Burton, the Adams family, like that whole. Yeah, she yeah, reminded totally. us of Christina Ricci. Oh, she, yeah. yeah. Totally looked like Wednesday. Yeah, just really cool. And again, your pictures are phenomenal and you're just looking at them and then you just want more, you know? So it's so, so cool to hear the story. You know, when we approach finishing our work and what we want for the story, we try to have it be a conversation, mm. not like just a statement. So we want people to come in and engage with it and uh, kind of talk to the piece a little bit and see what they pull from it and like have that conversation be open-ended. So exactly, there's always like, oh, what's more going on there? What could be there? So it just lets them engage with it in a way that otherwise, you know, like if you're just looking at something flat that's like too statement-y, then it, it becomes, oh, okay, I got it. And then you just move on. You know, we always try to put in details of like, when you look at it again oh hey i see something right there i didn't notice before yeah. mm -hmm. or just like what could the story behind that yeah. be the pieces that we like the most so we feel are the most successful are when it's right at the edge of either something's going to happen or something just happened but you don't actually know and so you're right. not really sure where it's going to go or where it came from we, li we like that space of like uncertainty you guys are great so this next one we have up is a 2010 so next year we moved into it's a civilized extraction Right. So we have, you know, a woman in this super awesome black dress. And Which is Dolly Mop. That's name. the name of the designer is Dolly oh, Mop nice. for that. And that's a case where like we, we had a friend, um, Alison Cohen is just a really, right? Alison, yeah. she, she, she was a stylist and she was working with Dark Garden at the time. And the designer for the clothing line, Dolly Mop was selling work through Dark Garden. And Dark Garden is an amazing like corsets and like, gothic -y clothes yeah. and uh so that sort of that piece actually was kind of born out of hey i have these amazing wardrobes and they sent the wardrobe over to us and we're like yeah let's yeah let's do something with that and and uh and then we had a we had a friend who was visiting with that dog yeah that okay greyhound, that amazing irish greyhound yeah, yeah. Uh, but the snake is stuffed, actually. Is it? Like a, <laughs> That's what I was saying. It's, 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 it's a, a snake stuffed because snake. Because yeah. It's pretty real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, even, really? you know, going back to the up to no good, the rat that 
we right. had it, it was in bad shape it was taxidermy <laughs> but was he was like he was like then. missing an eye like i had to definitely go and paint later like oh go God. back because i i do like also work for hire i'm a retoucher so i do like photo realistic retouching so then like yeah painting all the rat fur back on I'm like hey, easy peasy i got that and that's <laughs> still in photoshop to this day yeah. yes yeah Wow. Everything we do runs through Photoshop, every single thing. Like Photoshop is- They know what amazing people they have using their stuff. <laughs> any clue? <laughs> is that what's happening? That is awesome. Yeah. We, did, we did do an interview with uh, Adobe. Yeah, that's right. Uh, for their show, Make It. Um, it and, and had to, it's not, you're, you're right, it's not up on our site, but I should probably- Yeah, we'd love to check oh, yeah, that out. It was about show, a year ago. It was about a year ago, but I, like, I brought some of the fingers on, which- um, oh, the fingers are there. No, okay. no, the, no, oh, I brought oh, these. Yeah, oh, those fingers. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I'll show these because they're hilarious. So this was from um, a piece called Undertow. Oh, yeah, and she's actually got a cute up Oh, is it? Oh, then I should, I should wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring those in later. <laughs> but that's really cool. Aside. I'd love to see, you know, we'd love to, um, if you could share with us um, that interview or, well, you know, we'll add that in. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. That'll be it's terrific. It's a good show, too. It's a really, it's like got all kinds yeah. of great artist interviews yeah. on that show. All right, now I'm going to move on to 2011, Vanitas? Vanitas. Vanitas, yeah. Vanitas. Yeah. thank you. 2011, Vanitas. I mean, this beautiful material. And what is happening in the scene? We've got a mirror. That's, again, that's a scene where we're, we, we have worked with awesome actors and wardrobe stylists. The wardrobe stylist on that was um, Margaret Bolton Grace. And she has just like deep ties to ACT, which is our local American Conservatory Theater, which has an astoundingly amazing costume shop. Um, but at the moment is kind of because of the pandemic, it's kind of like yeah, they just had to close up. down and oh, no. COVID. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's permanent. But the right. shop itself has packed up, and now where it's going to come back, we don't know. Yeah. But right. they, they didn't get rid of any of the costumes. But the, if you can imagine 50, 50 years worth of American. Or yeah, conservatory like theater yeah. plus some of the opera has some of their costumes there too and it's it's a beautiful selection so yeah. margaret's great she deep dive so that was a all historic clothing well, and, and she's just uh really good too about because like the the cloth that's kind of the shiny cloth is actually i think just a bolt of fabric right was it really oh in maybe i've got it hanging up yeah, on the wall so we're both it. looking at it <laughs> well the funny thing about this one too the story here is that like Sometimes you just have to let, you just have to like, if you throw it down and that's it. And, and, and sometimes like that's, that's just, you just let serendipity happening. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the model sat down and she did that and you had just started doing the lighting. We just were kind of like starting like doing some tests and a lot of times what we'll do is we'll, we'll, you know, we'll shoot a little bit, kind of like make sure all the lighting's playing right, everybody looks right. And you know, how just everybody sat down the first time was great, but that black outfit um, was extremely hot and it was very difficult to wear for a long time. So she ended up having to pull the mask off and, and on and kind of get up and kind of relax. And the, the plague mask. The, the the plague yeah, plague no, the mask. So in the first the shot, she wasn't mask. wearing that costume. Yeah, so like when we all sat down, but that was like the most natural, how everybody sat down, how the fabric laid, everything laid just right. And so ended up a very early capture became the meat of all the bodies. And we had to basically go in and just like reshoot the heads with the mask on and, and, yeah, I think and the we, head in position. Yeah, but, and then ended up stitching that on to uh, the other bodies that were, yeah. and, you know, cause the fabric flowed a certain way and it was just, it never yeah. got back. We spent like an hour trying to get back <laughs> and we never could. So but that's like not atypical. Like we're, we're notorious for like Frankensteining like the, Person. Yeah. So like, we'll have somebody and then we'll be like, okay, well, let's take that hand from that shot, but then let's take this hand from this other shot. And so like, we end up cutting everything together to get yeah. like the perfect. But then that also means that a lot of our stuff, like many Photoshop things, like it is anatomically impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they can't, nobody can physically do that. Yeah. But so, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> look at any Renaissance painting. Like they can't yeah. visibly, they, that's, that wasn't possible either. Like the way people right. see Yeah, it. there's some of those are y'all, huh? Well, I noticed that in your website as well, you guys um, mentioned that you try to emulate the old Dutch and Italian masters. And I really like in this, you know, that you've got the mirror, you know, you've got more things that you have to find in this painting of like, yeah. what's, you know, the <laughs> One thing about that shoot is that that shoot was also part of a portrait series we did with Mike Davis. Yeah. So Mike Davis, who has 
had many shows at 111 Manhattan. Yeah. And is a, like one of the greatest living artists right now of like, right? <laughs> yes. And um, so we, we created this medieval town really with all these kind of like vignettes of, of shops and the different spaces. And we shot his portrait. We have two different portraits with him. Yeah. Um, yes, you're on the barber where like he's like oh, bloodletting oh, somebody. So yeah. And we incorporated kind of like all of his um his his, his imagery and, and symbolism. Yeah. And Actually stuff. I have something. Like I again I save all these souvenir props. Yeah. Nice. This was this was from his show. Oh yeah, yeah. This right here. So there was like like there oh. were all these like oh, aged pieces of paper that were hanging yeah. around him, and this is this is Mike Davis's. So we get the trunk. Dark. Oh yeah, get that, get that. <laughs> nice. <Stop the> rest. <laughs> Dude, I'm so, so definitely excited. Mike Davis is one of. Those, I was just like, he is a Renaissance man, and he, you know, I don't believe in re reincarnation normally, but then like with him, I'm like, he had to be an old master painter, because yeah, just all this like he's just in that time period of all the, yeah, the the Dutch. Yeah. So this was so for one of the pieces Whoa. there's actually somebody who's been like so the vanitas was like the beginning where she's like cutting herself open she's for, making a trade she's making a trade a bad trade right and so then later this was the corpse that i created so that when we shot somebody like lying on the ground who'd already been like gutted this was then photoshopped the, the sub in wow. for, for her center body yeah, yeah for her center body so you are great at like computer animation but also you're great at like textiles you're physically great. yeah so I physically, physically yeah that's really cool but then like the things that are made in the computer it's but it's the same it's the same like if you can if you can build an object you can the, the programs behave the same so yeah but like where do you source that i would have no idea where to source a pieces to cut open a body that is, i mean <laughs> I was this is actually oh. no idea where to yeah, source this, this like i literally made this so this is like plastic it's just plastic and like painters plastic and then this is just like a skeleton from like the halloween store you know <laughs> and so then it's the the torso and then i wrapped it with plastic and then like honestly a heat gun so a heat gun <laughs> then sucks the plastic down to the, the and then it like melts it so then these are just like wire just wire bits so yeah. All right, so now we're going to get that Fake Believe. We have another website oh, called true, yeah. Fake Believe where we've shared a lot of the processes of what, how so we've made things. So there's a deep dive into the- Spell that, that out for us? Issue. Yeah. Uh, Fakebelieve.net. Yeah. And we have a lot of behind the scenes for our set building and also our CG work too and Photoshop. Like I do a lot of Photoshop-y like from here to here. Awesome. Okay, yeah, we'd love to, to see that. I'm gonna put that on the list here to go check out. That'll be fun. You can totally geek out on this stuff. This is so neat. Okay, so 2012, The Last Good Man. Mm. So I see this, does this one go with, I know you had a Me Familia series. Is that one, or is that different? Yes. It was a little was, before that, no. Uh, okay. Last Good Man was a portrait that we did, because we started doing artist portraits for a little bit, for a couple years of artists that we just really liked and wanted to kind of capture them in their own style of work. So this was of Scott Musgrove. Oh, cool. And so we did uh, two different uh, two different pieces with Scott where we showed him like at the beginning of his journey and at the end of his journey. And it ties into what he says of how he approaches his work that he's kind of under, uh, uh, discovering all these forgotten- Extinct, uh, long extinct. extinct magical creatures, but they're extinct because of man's hubris. Yeah. And so we just imagined him going on his journey to go find all these things. And so we shot a before and an after. So the last good man is uh, the after where he's in the same space as the, uh, the, as the before piece, but now this, the space is overgrown and destroyed and water levels have risen. And water, the only yeah. thing keeping him alive is the knowledge that got him to where he is now, but it's useless because it's underwater. It's yeah. all these books. Right, all the books water. underneath. Is that all the books underneath him, all the paintings? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it's like wasted knowledge. Yeah. <gasps> wow. And you know, your guys's your guys' artist series is so cool that I you know for years I've seen that one of Robert Bowen with the rainbows coming out of it. Rainbow, I love it. And those. I have just I've been in love with it forever. I've been in love with it forever. It's just so neat how you did that. I took yeah. I took extra like look at it before I was to talk to you today. I was like, 
you know, I'm going to go extra stare at that thing and figure out how to do that. I, <laughs> that <laughs> I was, always was like, was did Robert Bowen put paint in his mouth? <laughs> yeah. It, no, it was, it was, um, no, milk. Whoa. It was milk. So <laughs> he literally, and because milk is thick. Yeah. And, and, and okay, so he yeah. literally drooled the milk and then in Photoshop, again, painted the rainbows on. Wow. Because Bob, Robert does this whole thing about taking, like, this was a little way back. His work mm -hmm. now is more like he's doing the combination of animals and thing and machines or jewels. Both Robert and Pardee are like honoring the rainbow, that the rainbow has a lot to say. And the rainbow can include a lot. And it can, you know, and so it's just like it can be happy, it can be dark, it can be. And, and so, you honored it in rainbow fluorescent colors. Yeah. And so that was is, that, is this that just our age group that we're like, yes, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, well, like, Robert had the, a huge solo show for at Lopo Gallery that was, this was pre Spoke, pre Ken Harmon at Spoke Gallery when Ken Harmon was with Lopo. And Ken curated that. And, and so Robert had this huge solo show. So oh. we shot that portrait for the, that solo show. Oh, it was nice. really cool. It was oh, an honor. So cool. So well, this is super neat. And again, you know, go to the website and check out all these artist portraits because they are that so- That one's also on Fake Believe because uh, in order to, we, the set for The Last Good Man is actually two different sets that Stacy built. Right. And we shot them in a forced perspective. And so the, each set is about eight foot tall. So when you put it together, that's a 16 foot tall room. And the one that he's sitting on, we actually built over a shallow pool that we made so that he's actually, you know, in the water. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. So now we're moving on to here, 2013, No Such as What I Want. Yeah. That was a theme show that we did with uh, Kevin Titzer, who, right? Kevin yeah, Titzer. Kevin Titzer. Who, He's amazing. Yeah. And it was around uh, uh, William Oldham, the, art, the musician William Oldham. And yeah. so we picked out that particular song and kind of embodied what we felt like what was in that song. And that was an interesting collaboration, how it came together too, uh, partially because of the wardrobe artist who uh, came in and, uh, and she's a, a customer, right? Right. So she, a, a designer, so she made that dress. And one of the interesting things that happened when she made that dress is that she actually worked with somebody that uh, had been like a, a lover yes. of William oh, Oldham wow. and had a bunch of love letters that they had exchanged. And uh, in this, and they wrote, she wrote, particularly in this like scripty kind of uh, flowery, you know, uh, script. And she incorporated the, some of the love letters into the dress. They're actually oh. written on the dress and then like kind of bleed in the dress because she got it wet. And her name is Katie Papusa, by the way. Yeah. Katie Papusa was the wardrobe designer on that. And that's another case where we have this idea, we want to have somebody in a, in a, in a shack. And, and that kind of came from, I think our own personal, my own personal from like, I, my family's from Kentucky or Georgia. Like I kind of have like roots that way. And, and so I have like a really long, long history back through the United States, both good and bad. Right. Because yeah. we all have like, we're just complicated family stories. And so this idea of like being someplace where you've got all this, the weight of where you come from rooting you down and you've got these pictures like you see like really on this, but all the pictures on the wall, those are all like our personal family photos that yeah. we then scratched, scratched out the faces. Yeah. Yeah. Not like we don't like our family, but it was like, we're trying to tell a story of yeah. like the burden of history sometimes it holds right. you. That she was basically rooted to where she was by her family ancestry and, family. and stories right. and and, and the know. particular story we the pick with the song we picked from from Oldham's yeah. work was about that so when we said this to Katie Papusa we we're like this is our story wow we'd love to work with you what would you like to do and so she's when it came back to us she's like oh I could write and make a dress with poetry on it like yeah oh it's so cool and yeah well, so true you know you are you are bound by you might not like any of them and they might totally suck but they're still your ancestors and you're yeah. from or, or there's the <laughs> loss or you love them deeply <laughs> right or you love them deeply or you long for it but now it's the gone and you know yeah, it's that is all true. complicated and messed up sometimes we're held back by our grief yeah oh, man. so then the, for that one the where the floorboards are and up is a set that we built and she's sitting at the table and and lighted and then the bottom part is a we shot as a tabletop scene so it's all kind of spread out on this table and the camera's overhead 
and we're shooting down and, and capturing this dirt scene yeah. to show what's underneath. So the, I made all the roots. I made all the roots with like literally hair. I have all this hair. And so I'd like to you know, take clay and then have all the hair come out. And so then we were able to literally lay the roots down and take the pot or take the glasses and put them in. I think I even have the dentures. Because oh, if somebody says they're going to give you dentures, you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Absolutely. I'm going to give me what? I'll take it. Yeah. I don't know whose teeth these are, but wow. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So those, uh, these were in that shoot. Well, and what was uh, fun too is that in terms of, so even when we're doing projects like this and, and we're building these big things, we're like, we realized that that shoot was probably only a half day's worth of shooting studio time. Yeah. So we did two concepts. So that's this on that same day with that same team, we shot the other piece that's the uh, um, It Will Be Ours, where it's the woman kind of like reaching in for nature and towards the little boy watching the TV. So both of those projects were shot on the same day. We probably produced yeah. about four images, but two vastly different things with the same crew. So she created not only just that dress for uh, this piece, but she created this other living dress made out of plants um, that uh, it, it was in 2013, yeah, same, same thing, thing. Yeah. and uh, where where it's like all made out of plants and hemp and, and stuff like that. Yeah, and wow. so then I, and I, I know this isn't one of the ones you've pulled, but it is like, it's, it's, a, it's a popular piece of ours. Oh, it's it. Yeah. This is. Oh yeah, so then these are the other fingers. These are the other fingers. <laughs> <laughs> More. Oh yeah, and some of the, yeah. Yeah. So I made all these stick pieces oh, cool. to have the character. So she actually had um, plant hands. <laughs> nice. Make it, uh, yeah. And, and so they, these were like glued on. And so what this does is it gave the, the model you yeah, know, the opportunity to, to play with the character quite a little bit. That so is like, so cool. that is like and then the, so the makeup artist kind of blended them in and, and yeah so threw it, them down. and then there were all these like little little mushroom bits and so those were like growing out of her flesh right so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is so cool and then also on this one i see you have um you have like super cool lighting coming yes. down through so that was kind of a company worked with a, a gaffer joe mendoza on on creating the light story of what's going on um we didn't you know but some of that is also then stacy going in to a lot of times this is what we do when we work on our projects is that we'll start with the lighting intention and all the lightings in a specific place yeah some of the stuff it's really hard to recreate so light streaks like that she came in and augmented it yeah. so that way there's really strong the idea of in Photoshop, uh, uh, blooming out those different streaks, so you really get a good read on all that yeah. stuff. But that set, like the uh, it will be our no no the, it will be ours is like the um, no such as what I want, and that the it has two pieces that are brought together. So there's a live set, and then there's a miniature set. Yeah. So oh, when wow. we're seeing into the world, it's all broken, and it's like the wild world. Yeah, that was yeah. a, that was literally a miniature set that we shot like on a tabletop. Yeah. and then merge the two together. But the real life set had these like big broken parts and they were just painted black. So then later we could just bring the two together very easily in Photoshop. Yeah. Awesome. So cool. So now we go into, now we get to get the, those one fingers back out because we're going yeah. into 2014, a curious thing. Yeah. And you guys have a whole um, series on these on your website, which are super neat. Yeah, this was an interesting kind of uh, uh, pull together. This was one of the pieces that started to transition us from doing things 100% practically to working a lot more digitally. Yeah. Um, partially because we didn't have uh, the luxury of time to build a lot of the stuff for this particular series. Well, and we wanted this one to be underwater, and yeah. we really wanted to use those jellyfish, which are in the aquarium. Yeah. yeah. So Jason went, and so this is, these are the things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, they're going to try to fill them, fill them through the screen. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I went to the aquarium and shot a bunch of jellyfish and got that as background material. Uh, we worked with uh, another uh, clothing designer named Christina Mosilio, who goes by uh, Black Lotus. She, she made that dress. She made the jellyfish dress. Wow. And uh, she does a lot of work now with uh, Zoe Jakes, and she's got her own thing. She, yeah, she, yeah, with um, 
uh, Beats Antique. Beats Antique, yeah, the, the, the band. Yeah. Really awesome. So she made this wonderful, you know, like jellyfish inspired dress that had just so many bits and parts and stuff. And since we were underwater, we were able to move to a capture scene uh, sequence where uh, we shot her uh, mostly against blue and then we're able to drop in a lot of the world around her. Some of the tighter stuff, like in, um, so in this one was more where it was blue, but we had uh, Stacy made kelp and stuff like that for the foreground. Out of like, that same plastic. Yeah. So same plastic, like getting plastic hot and it shrinks up and then I stained the plastic so that it looked like kelp. Yeah. Which is ironic, isn't it? That I'm trying to do something about nature and I'm creating it with plastic. <laughs> I know, I know. It's I, I kind of hate that, honestly, because this I we are very mindful of our footprint. Yeah, and we I reuse materials over and over and over again, and so the plastic honestly was like waste plastic that I had been collecting for just such occasion. Yeah. But still, you know, it is like this is actually this is all paper. Like so, this would to uh, dust to dust. This would all go back. Most of the yeah, things yeah. we really try to. Yeah, a lot of the sets that we'd make that they would be ripped back down to their core elements and there'd be very little waste in the process of putting them up and taking them down so that yeah. way we could reuse different elements again and again yeah yeah i know I or know. or we'd share them out with the community too sometimes there was yeah. a lot of the the we bought a bunch of sticks for doing a couple different things right. and we ended up sharing that with like one of the local scenery shops Right. We would then either rent it out or use some of the material, and then you know, it was great for us because then they would store it too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. These yeah, are these pick are it really up every once in a while, brush all the spiders off, and. <laughs> but what is what is cool is like you know we would sometimes we would have a material or a, a prop that we'd made or or something, and it's just like well gosh this is really cool what do we do with this I can't just throw it away but at the same time you're like oh well, should I give it away to somebody like what if it's like I'm giving my own art away. Yeah. But yeah. the reality is, is like if we give something to somebody, they do their own thing with it. Yeah. It mm -hmm. becomes like exquisite corpse. So yeah, it might have been our art to start, but what they did, it became theirs. Right. So I think it it is good when artists, when we when we let go and we share with each other, give each other yeah. things. It's good. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And and again, you guys, I know it's it's really hard for us all to try to create and and try to um, keep the environment alive you know but i think it's good everyone's trying their best but yeah that was a good the the whole undertow series was a good exercise in us trying to think about how we could lean further into digitally compositing and creating things without being so practical about it and try to find ourselves a lot more flexibility with how we end up with our final elements yeah and this is just beautiful again just this woman looking like she's just floating in the water and and all of it just looking so real. Well, and, and great details too, like the the makeup artist, uh, Melanie Manson, she put metallic makeup on her. So that yeah. way she became very iridescent and, and really kind of bloomed out some of these highlights. Yeah, we worked with Melanie Manson a number of times. She's down in Los Angeles. So she's just, she is an astoundingly creative makeup artist. Um, the other makeup wear artist we work with all the time is uh, Ji Hoon Kim. Yeah, she's in San Francisco. But she does hair and makeup, and she's she's also she's the one who did the sticks and all the stuff. She we work with her a lot. She does a lot of <laughs> practical effects too, so that's what you know. That's exactly so. It's great to yeah. you know have all these different you know. Yeah, what a great collaboration and a great yeah. group, a yeah. great community. And a lot of our our gore effects have been done by um, oh, uh, Margaret Kerrigan. Margaret Kerrigan. Like we're doing all these shadows because these because they're such an integral part of our work. Yeah. Like you know. So that the, that van so toss where she's being cut open, like that was actually a wound that Margaret Kerrigan made, and then she put it onto the person's stomach. Like so, that's that's a real. So that was point. there, and she could you know do, so that she's tipping the dagger into it and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going into 2015. Oh, Eliza Gagger. Yeah, uh, the other Eliza shout out we need to do is from that series, okay. Undertow, Eliza Gagger is a, she's an artist too. Yeah. And, and we just, she's somebody we just wanted to work with. She's just cool. She's, she's just a really amazing actor model for one because yeah. she finds characters. But on top of that, we just, I, we just kind of wanted to hang out with her because she's just, just a really fantastic artist. She Great does, energy to the project and. Yeah, totally. Yeah. The whole she has a whole series called Problem Problem Lips. Gifts, um, that are just people write her problems and then she yeah. draws a story of it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. She look up Eliza Gauger Problem okay. Gifts. We will for sure. I'll make sure I get these spellings from you too. That's really neat to check them out. Thank you for sharing that. 
So now we got two coming up. These look like they're in the same series. Um, 2015, um, let's talk about this Maharashi Mistari. Yeah. That was a longer uh, series. That, that was probably one of the largest series that we did, uh, Rough and Ready Sideshow. In fact, we still have more concepts in we it. do. That, that we're, we're we'd like to do, actually. Probably pull the trigger on at some point in time. Good. Yeah. Um, so this is a gift that keeps on giving it in terms of, yeah. And and I think it's in terms of, we, we approached it. So this was after Undertone. So we started to approach it as how we, could we create a basic premise that would really open us up to where we could execute something uh, in a similar manner, but have widely different results. And we kind of settled on this idea of uh, like a cameraman going around to trying to capture these roadside attractions and carnival shows and the people that were uh, in them uh, before they all disappeared. So it's kind of, you know, similar to like, like Scott Musgrove does with his, you know, in, in his approach. But one of the key details that for our series is that we didn't want it to be, uh, it's not a, it's not a freak show. It's not a side show. It's not something where we're, you know, being a voyeuristic. What we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to give um, ownership and uh, importance and, you know, uh, to the person in it. So it was all about the person coming out and, you know, like the idea is that they've ripped their banner down and have brought it to be the background for this photo shoot. And they have, you know, just, uh, ownership over this. Yeah, their own agency. So agency. Changes, because I mean, I, I love history and I love the history of, of the United States. And I, I personally, as a kid, loved going to fairs and circuses. And like the idea of the freak show was always just like fascinating to me. Yeah. But at the same time, like even as a child, I could recognize like, this is exploitive. Like there's mm -hmm. a part of this, this is yeah. wrong. And so to sort of say like, well, I want to take this and I want to honor because so many of the people from the traveling shows were like, this was how they were making a living. Like this was, this was their thing. They were proud of what they were doing and they had their own agency. And right. so to, to, yeah. to, to say to, to a, a period of time or to say to a person say like, I honor you and I honor what you're about. And let's try to tell the story with you controlling the narrative as opposed to just like, yeah, yeah. exploitive. Well, you can really um, feel it. I mean, in these, in these, it's hard to say what we call paintings, photos, <laughs> digital, you know, I, uh, how do we, what do we say? What do we say? What is, what do we call this? We've ended up calling them pieces <laughs> because <laughs> same thing, because they are, they are digital paintings at the end, but yeah. they, have, they have photography, they have CG, they have a lot of things. In this case, like the way these are always shot is that we have the wood that has been painted to be aged. And then there's a backdrop of just plain canvas. Yeah. In the same way that like there would be people that would travel around the world and when the camera was invented and they would put up these backdrops and people would walk in front of them and they would take their photo. So that's what we were trying to do. And so then in post-production, then I paint the backgrounds to mm. be, like painted banners. Yeah. And, and then the, the frame that goes around it always, that's created digitally too. Yeah, it's and, really pretty. It looks like it's, but it's, like, it's like the embellishment that we hand do theoretically speaks to the person who's in the yeah. right. picture. So yeah, well, these, these pieces, I feel that, you know, yeah, you have, you know, side shot element, but also they feel like you've empowered them with, like, they're superheroes. Like, they are Yeah, uh, well, that's how we kind of you know? see it. Like, really, it's really beautiful how you presented them. Yeah. You know, you might and A lot of it is just like, it's women. It's just like, we, I want to give our characters agency. And as a woman, I'm just like, I'm tired of being victimized. I'm tired of reading stories yeah. about victims. I'm just, I'm just over it. And I feel like we all, now's the time to tell new stories. And I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about history and we shouldn't talk about all the bad things that happen. But if you constantly show me a woman who's being a victim, or I can show you a woman who's being a hero. Yes. I want that one. I want, yeah. the, I want the story where like, I want to be them. I don't want to be the victim. I want to be the hero. Yeah, because how are you going to get people to believe in them and look up to them and trust them if they look at them as victims? If, if you know, people- Exactly. Like, okay, your paintings are children, you know, down, down our ancestors, you know, down the road, then they'll look back and be like, oh, they looked up to women then. They looked up to women. They thought of them as beautiful and amazing, you know? So mm. that is important that you have made these, these pictures and that they- yeah around for people to, yeah. to see how and we so that's why sometimes the women are a little predatory 15. i mean honestly i mean this is just me personally like i'm just i'm, a, I'm angry there's a part of me that's angry about that here we are now and really i'm still fighting for women's rights seriously and you know that's not right 
So no. sometimes our women are a little. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. I like it. It's, it's like, yes, you better pay attention to how powerful these women are. Yeah. We're going to get a snake or just cut in the stomach or something. <laughs> but it is it's very powerful. And very good. At the same time, I think we both like sensuality and we both like the human body and we both like, there's nothing wrong with sexuality. There's nothing wrong with, with being a sexual creature, you know? So I think you can be we, strong and sexual. Yeah. So I feel it's like there's, it, it is, it's a fine line. It's like when, when somebody comes exploitive, when somebody is exploited, it's because they no longer in control of their story. Right. But, but for a person to say, to have their own control, whether they want to talk about sex or they want to talk about violence or they want to talk about homemaking, doesn't yeah. matter. Let them tell their own story and then right. it'll be truthful. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Ron. Oh How my you gosh. Are? Like, you look great. It's so good to see you. I know, I'm still alive. How are you doing? <laughs> Look, he's growing his beard. He's got the beard going. Beard, look at the beard. Look at the hair coming out. Yeah. <laughs> right, wow. true. I got some of the same. <laughs> I actually cut my own hair last week. I couldn't take it anymore. It was I, like, nice. I was like, I'm like, not, yeah. not too bad. I finally reached my old barber, and uh, his shop on Hay Street finally opened, but just on the weekends. So I said, do you do house call? He says, well, OK. Because my son-in-law lives with me, and he's uh, when he was a kid growing up in the near the Panhandle, we used to go to the same barber. So uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. He, he went off, went to Columbia, you know, and I says, and we found out we had the same barber. He says, does he still talk a lot about that play that he does? I said, yeah. <laughs> one play does it. It's great. Um, yeah. So, uh, but he also runs the Hate Street Fair. So, oh, nice. He's not the, he's no slouch, no slouch. Michael Xavier. But so I got a, a date with him coming up. <laughs> oh, nice, Ronnie. Well, really we like, we like, we like the look. We like it. it. Looks good. I know. Yeah. Well, if you don't, if you don't end up having the date with him, don't worry about it. This looks great. Gosh, you look fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, Guess what? Right. Most men don't keep all their hair. You I look know, great. Right? You look amazing. You're very I love all that. It's thick. Look at that. It's super thick. Can I borrow some? Yeah. <laughs> Can I have some? Well, this, but that brings up an interesting thing. Uh, my mother was the first of nine kids. Oh. Irish grandfather, um, Michael McMahon, was uh, had a classic, you know, fringe around the edge when I knew him as a youngster, as a, up to about four, four years old. And I thought, like, well, that's mother's side. That's the genetics, right? So you, I should be, at the same time, losing hair. And I was starting to seem like it was receding a bit up, you know. And I thought, oh, I'm going to be like, oh, going to be like grandpa. You know, my dad's father was, uh, he had his hair till he died. But he died when he was, like, what, 62, 63 or so. So I didn't see if he was going to go permanently bald. My dad didn't go bald. But you get the genetic from the mother's side supposedly so if your grandmother's father's bald you should probably be bald too hmm. so was that my real grandpa yeah right <laughs> oh right <laughs> all these true. questions all these questions well, we're jealous you're, you're genetically blessed ronnie all right yeah. well, ron was great to work with you donor, i'm available to be a donor so <laughs> So we're going to hear about your piece and um, your inspiration that you you had on them. And then if you'd like, we're having a good time talking about their pieces. So if you'd like to sit in and um, and listen, oh, it's been really fun I going through. We have a few more pieces after you that, to talk about and, and hear from them. So so yeah, let's let's talk about the, the Curious Gardener. Yeah, Ron was, was great to, to work with as part of this series. You know, it, it, it was flexible enough that it really kind of like, let us incorporate him because, uh, you know, this is for, we did this piece specifically for 111 Minna as well as part of the, the last cast show. It was the last cast, it was the 50th last cast show, I think, right? I think Probably. it was the... Like whenever the, the, like a big, it was still a big well, show. 2018. 2018. The 50th was... Uh, 2016? 16, 15, 2015. <laughs> yeah, so that would be the uh, 45th anniversary. 
Twenty fifth. Okay, yeah, that makes. Oh, sense. okay, okay, okay. Forty fifth. Yeah. Gotcha. I think we're trying to do the fiftieth this year. <gasps> oh, okay, that's what it was. Yeah. 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 We still have to do the fiftieth. In fifty. Yeah. Well, oh, for, yeah. for, for, for those tuning in at home, the, this is one of the biggest shows. Like, this is the show. This is the show. So if you get to be in this show, if you get to be in the, the Last Gaff show, you got to bring it. Yes. So we knew we had to do something super cool. And then also, we've been fortunate to, we live here in San Francisco, so we have met Ron and have been at many sketch shows. And just like, Ron is this wonderful human who just is obviously... Well, maybe if you don't know, he's been an enormous influence on um, pop culture, counterculture, America's voices as we know it has come through Ron's <laughs> shop of just mm -hmm. supporting alternative art, oh. comic art, graphic novels, just he's, he's everything. So now we were in this, we've been invited to this amazing show and we're going to get to take a portrait of this amazing, iconic human. So no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> right? So we just, from having been able to get to know you, Ron, it's been impressive how you are just a curious human. You love seeing and exploring and finding out things and you ask questions and you, you have an open heartedness that is rare really amongst humans. And so that's where it kind of was born out of was just this honoring just how you have had such impact because you have been open. And then, so the beard, we decided to make this big, huge beard, this kind of octopus beard, because it was a metaphor for how much you have reached out into the world uh -huh. and how much influence. Interesting ways. <laughs> um, so this was a really fun, very personal piece of just us. We love you. We love you. And it was just, it was an honor to be in the show. And then we wanted to create something that was like, made you this hero, this superhero to us. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, your beard has clearly got superpowers, so. And I hear that um, now, Ronnie, you have this piece at your house, right? Or it might be at the it might be at the last gas. I think it's still the uh, last gas. Oh yeah. <laughs> in the gallery, the yeah. at the at the headquarters, there's this amazing space of uh, just mind blowing art that art has. We, we still have the back room is intact. We had to sell to survive uh, a few years ago. We had to sell off half of our upstairs. So everything that was over there got shoved in the half that remains. And it's been, everything's been digging out ever since then. Yeah. I had, I had the misfortune of breaking a leg. So I had to stay home for a while. And my poor son has had to shoulder the responsibility of that. But we've got it. Pretty much cleaned out in the new space we've got room for even a more another little art gallery oh good uh, yeah so the uh but everything's coming together and we'll be able to have people in again we now have bathrooms because the side that we sold had all our five bathrooms on it right. <laughs> you never sell a prop piece of property that includes your bathroom exactly the sale price included enough money to pay make your new bathrooms because they're very expensive. Yeah. yeah. 60 grand a piece. Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. So, well, I'm really anyway, glad that Colin uh, is taking over. Well, yeah, he's, he's, really, he, he took over 20 years ago. I don't know. But, <laughs> but, he, but he's honoring what you've created. Yeah, like, for sure. The legend will live. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think he's got his own legend going. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I certainly hope so. Yeah, that's true. That is that, yes, that is very true. Colin has has his own perspective and is definitely bringing his own views yeah. to life and to, and and cre making Last Gas relevant to like all new people, like a whole new all the youngins that are coming up. Yep. <laughs> they're, they're like a they're like a stampede of buffalo behind you. You know, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. Well, so great and such a great piece. And we're so excited that we get to look at it and think about Ron and have you here with us because you're the best. So now, Ronnie, I don't know if you want to, um, you, you might remember their pieces, but if you go on their website, it's fun to check out some of these. We're going to, right now, we're going to look at 2017 Science Saves, which is really interesting. Like, where did this come from? You guys having something with like 
words and something that looks like it's like an advertisement for another world that we're all supposed to move to, you know, the place that we're supposed to live one day. Yeah, the world that we wish we would have lived in in 2017. <laughs> 20, you know, 2016 was hard. It was really hard. And, and I think that all of the people we work with, like we said, the wardrobe designers and the makeup artists, and we all just are frustrated that we wanted to visualize the world that we wanted. And so we did, we created a number of pieces. And so this was science. We had another one where, like I said, my family, my family goes all the way back to the 1600s. My, I'm related to the Sons of Liberty. And wow. so I feel like I'm a patriot. I'm a patriot. Did so motorcycles back then? <laughs> <laughs> all the way back, all the way back. The Tea Party. So I'm one. I'm one of one of my relatives was in the tea was one in the Boston Tea Party. The Sons of Liberty. Who, wow. Yeah, threw the tea into the bay. So I'm related to them. So, <laughs> so for me, patriotism. And and my father served in Vietnam. He died in Vietnam. Like my whole he's lived, been in the military. Like. I come from a military family and I just was starting to get really frustrated with just this idea of like, what it, does it mean to be patriotic? I'm like, don't mm -hmm. tell me what it means to be patriotic. I can be patriotic. So we have a one that's got a patriot with like the tricorn hat and he's got a, a mask that's, that's an American flag and he's yeah. in front of the constitution. When, and, Which you know. is was the, that a great COVID piece? Yeah. Yes. Oh, so this was all part of our sort of frustration, artist frustrated with, the way the world was going. Right. Yeah, it's awesome. You have a powerful woman. And again, relevant science saves, you know, believing in science, believing in what the scientist does. <laughs> yeah. And we wanted to like kind of hark to some of the propaganda posters, although in like mm -hmm. those styles. Yeah. Hey, you guys, super. I think propaganda and all your models are so, so strong. Hmm? I think propaganda art is the best of all. Yeah. <laughs> Can be, yeah. 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 No, I think you're right that, that we really do find, try to find actors who, so models, but they're also actors so that they can create a story. And that's where Jason, sort of how we divide things up, how I'm more, I worry more about how things look. And he sort of gets to the meat of casting and working with the talent to try to really pull the story out. Right. Find nuance in there, kind of get a complicated story, something a little more to ruminate on as you're looking at it. Just not so, you know, like faceted, not, you know, dimensional, you know, not, not plain as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Now we're looking at 2018. We have Walk With Me. We have this really woman in this beautiful red dress walking with a super cool spider in a land, a garden land that I'd really like to be hanging out at. That was for a piece of Modern Eden. We do a lot of work with Modern Eden. They're a gallery here in San Francisco. They're a beautiful, gorgeous space and um, really wonderful curators, um, Bradley and Kim. And they, that was a night garden, the theme. Uh, group shows will often have a theme. And so you try to figure out, well, how can I fit with a theme that still honors my own work, but isn't like right. this like albatross that's off on its own, <laughs> you know, so Martin, Modern Eden always has these really wonderful themes that totally fit us. And yeah. that was one of the, that was, a, that was an all digital piece. So that's, we made the model, everything wow. is digital. Yeah. And that came from, again, we're, we're. We wanted we, to, that was one of the first ones where we pushed and really made sure everything was in CG. It was, in, yes, it was all in CG, but we always like to tell the story of like, well, what's the monster's point of view? Like yeah. you asked earlier about a series called De Familia and De Familia was this project we did with uh, the Zero Friends posse for lack of a, so Zero Friends is like Alex Party and Dave Correa, Skinner, Robert Bowen, Way Shack, um, yeah, um, Quake yeah. and Chloe. And so it was fun to like explore, and, but those are all artists that literally draw monsters. They, they create yeah. horrifying creatures. <laughs> so like, it was fun to tell these stories of like, it, it was like we were a fan, we were all a family and we were uncovering these truths. And so, so Skinner actually came in and he had these like creepy long, fi I think I've got the finger somewhere. <laughs> creepy long, oh wait, I have the Skinner hat. Can you get oh, the yeah, Skinner yeah. hat down? Oh, nice. Okay. Hey. So, so Skinner was like somebody who was keeping care of the monsters. He was their caretaker and he loved them, but he himself was a little, well, you know, Skinner, he's a little crazy. Yeah. So Skinner like became like this evil wizard. He looked like an evil wizard, but he was really this like caring. <laughs> so there's, this was Skinner's hat. <laughs> yeah. He's an evil wizard with a smirk. Yeah, right. So, so we like telling those stories. We like to tell the story of like the, the monster's point of view because half the time, like, you know, so these were all Skinner's 
fingers, like so oh, there's cool. like, on the knuckles and these long, nasty. And so then the, the makeup art, like, so these were all the fingers. So then the makeup artist actually glued them to his, to his fingers. <laughs> so be like, yeah. yeah. Um, but we just, we always like to tell the other, the other point of view. So in that one, it's just like, well, Sp spiders are awesome. <laughs> spiders are amazing. They're so they're the artist of the of the of the insect world, right? Yeah. And and so we just like this idea of this woman like chilling with her bestie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it definitely looks like they're just hanging out. You know what I mean? Like uh, that, that. Okay, we like to tell the stories of the the monster's point of view, and just like so. Then the spider being a friend, like they're like spiders are amazing. Spiders have free reign in our house. Like they. Unless they're like over my bed, and even then we'll like relocate them. We're like, I'm sorry, you can't sleep here tonight. You need to go into the dining room. Go wow. <laughs> we'll eat all the other things that we don't want. Yeah, <laughs> I think we all swallow like twelve spiders in a lifetime when we're sleeping anyway, right? So it's like exactly, yeah. okay. exactly. Yeah. So those legs are good protectors. I respect them. I don't particularly care for them. Well, I, I, I. I used to be really afraid of spiders. And then when we moved to this house that we're in is kind of a little suburban. It's, it's a lot of trees and stuff. And the termites get really bad. And when it's hot, and I hate the termites because I'm like, don't eat my house. Oh, no. and, and for like one year, like there were just crazy swarms of spot. This termites were everywhere. And the next morning I went outside and every spider web all around our house was filled with termites. I was like, that's it. Right. The enemy is my friend. <laughs> That's true. And they got a good meal. Yeah. Good. So now, Ronnie, we're going to go on to the next one in 2019, The Hive, which this looks like you guys were still saying in the, the digital department and cool, you know, awesome bugs, right? Bees, which are amazing, just like spiders. So let's hear a little about this one. So this is where we started leaning more into kind of looking at uh, the idea of beautiful damage and how uh, we can incorporate more surreal into our characters. And so this one, uh, this particular character uh, was, yeah, much more into the bees and honey and how it can kind of play out. But her skin is actually honeycomb. So there's a case where like, uh, that's a good example of how we, we've moved now over time so that in the past we might build a set and we would take time to paint the set and make the set and then we'd photograph the set, but then ultimately it's just a photograph. Now we can build an object. So like, can you grab that when either of those things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, these, are, these are clay pieces that I'm making. Like, so this is a, a clay wolf that I'm making. Oh, neat. Oh. But so we would sculpt this in, in ZBrush. But then what is on this now that we've made this sculpted thing? And so now we can make our own materials in digital. So he is a boss at making materials. So we'll it's just- math. So he developed the honeycomb, like this layered skin honeycomb that he made. And so then it's now it's our like texture that we put on to the things. Yeah. And that, that hive one was an interesting one because we developed, so that's where like as we talked before about exploring into a series and what we can do with something. Yeah. So that started off as kind of this more renaissance -y portrait that was nectar, this gal in this dress and it was kind of more of a, more traditional portrait, but then we started to push in and explore her more and more and more. And in this particular hive one, we had these uh, honey, these hexagonal uh, panels, and where we took little snapshots of the different elements that of that were this woman, and and uh, put that onto another panel. So it's like panel on panel, and has this dimensional kind of thing that is then also. So we had these main portraits that were full full that we saw like elaborate costumes and their hands and their faces and she's drooling honey and all this other stuff and honestly it's sexy right it's woman with, with honey it's sexy yeah. <laughs> so so that's what we were like gosh wouldn't it be great if we just did focus on like just let's look at her mouth or let's look at her hand yeah. and so then we created all these little pieces and then Irene from Wonderland had this amazing show and we were like oh we'd love to be a part of that we have all these pieces that we could put together and make this hive. And so that's like, it's all hand embellished in the gold paint and wax. This is one of the perfect thing that had wax. That one didn't actually, that, that one didn't have wax. I didn't but, have wax, but so we ended up making a bunch of those little panels. Cause I just have a thing for hands. Like we both really like, and so we, we've done a lot with hands and, and yeah. <laughs> awesome. 
Well, since you end up with, I mean, uh, I was just trying to think of the commercial side of this. Uh, so you're often, you're hired to create uh, an image of some kind for somebody or a prop or a, a set. Uh, and then, and then, but what, when you go to do something in an art show, is that mostly just the finished product? The, you know, the photography is then the, the well, selling the same item? Or? Process, I think. Is that the, the? Yeah, so, so, you know, a lot of times the capture, the photography, or even the first initial outputs of CG are just the, the underpainting. It's the base. And there's a lot more digital work that goes on top of that, that follows kind of, you know, even traditional painting techniques that Stacy goes in and she'll like, you know, start to build up an image and, and have it kind of achieve something a lot different than if you were just to take a photograph of it. Well, it's all just fascinating. It's just, uh, so who, who are the, like an advertise, do you get advertising agencies that get your stuff? Yeah, it's just, somebody has to get it, you know, somebody has to understand it in order to say, well, wow, well, this could, this is the Judas bull for my product, you know. Yeah, right. People will follow me and follow it and buy it. Yeah. But they have to see it. And these people have the eyes that see it the way I do. So that's what's going on. Yeah. Well, yeah, commercial work will, an agency will, often it's because they want something surreal that doesn't exist. And mm -hmm. so they will we'll be hired to create the world or create the thing that just wasn't possible. And so those are fun. Those are, those are loads of well for the Catholic Church. I <laughs> <laughs> had to call from them. Yeah. <laughs> it's all advertising. That's all it is. That's another, so that's really cool. so another piece here, and this is the last one we have in our slideshow um, for today is 2020, but not broken. Right. Yes. Oh, let's hear about this one. Looks like a, it looks like a doll. Boss Gallery. And mm. she was doing a series that was responding to the now. Like that, that's pretty recent. It was yeah. over the summertime and, and it was just sort of artists responding to where we are in the state of things. It was probably in August, I think. So, no, a little earlier, yeah. But, but George, George Floyd had been killed. But so this is when, yeah, after George Floyd, and this is, you know, in responding to everything that was going on with people kind of saying, hey, look, you know what, this time, for real, no, we're done. For real. So, yeah. uh, and it was kind of like just, she wasn't so specifically talking about that, but she wanted to show a reflection. It was uh, a reflect, and it was uh, co-curated with uh, Tracy Piper. Yeah. And so it was a kind of like a, a, a reflection of where we are now. And this one was, uh, much like the one we did with the honey, uh, this one was a, a, a continuing exploration of, a, of our series uh, called Kintsugi, which is the Japanese art of mending. So where you take something that's broken and you mend it with gold and you make something that's more beautiful than what originally existed. And we felt like uh, that's very strongly represented what we wanted to say of, of what's going on for people right now, that they've certainly suffered a number of slings and arrows but you know not that they should have not that they whatever but uh the resilience that kind of comes through that is is beautiful and should be honored and, and we've done this before we've done a couple other porcelain where we've like broken porcelain that's been mended and and so it, we just wanted to do that so we wanted to show a woman who's strong and beautiful and yes has walked through some some damage and has been hurt but is strong, still strong and still beautiful. And, and I think we're just always trying to tell, show the thing that I want. Don't show me victimization, show me hero heroics. So, so it was that's... her regarding herself in the mirror, essentially seeing yeah. uh, a lot of what, so that, that was a difficult one of trying to find, a, it's a very simple presentation but it needed to show a lot of nuance of what's in the story and, and you know, to try and let a lot of things kind of come through. The theme on that one, I was saying earlier, how you always kind of have to stick with the theme is she wanted everything circular. It was oh. the, it through the looking glass. And so I yeah. think she wanted yeah. all the pieces round. Yeah. So then, which isn't typical size for us. So we just. Yeah. But yeah. so then that also lent us in for doing encaustic works. So that, that piece was, you know, uh, covered in wax and kind of embellished with some gold paint that really kind of brought everything through. So. Yeah. Yeah, that, it's really, yeah, it really looks, it looks like a ceramic doll. 
yeah, the head, head, everything yeah. That, that was sculpted by Stacy and ZBrush, and then and then he made all the textures, the texturing <laughs> and the lighting and all that kind of stuff, bringing all that together. Which is no, like I just I'm I'm amazed at just like you know we'll talk about it. I'm like, well, I really want porcelain, but you know. But when you talk about the quality of things, how light reflects on wood, how it reflects on metal, how it reflects on cement, that's all really different. Same light, but different materials. So how they, and so the fact that he's like making these materials is yeah. just kind of like, it's cool. it's something that gets so nerdy in the math. It's, it's <laughs> Funny, so. <laughs> I mean, I have to say we are we are all so lucky you guys found each other because it is such a blessing. It is so cool and so special, and I just I love it. This is this has been really fun. And Boy. you know, we haven't killed each other yet, know, so we're not know, right, up, right? Like we've made it. <laughs> up. Something right is happening here, and I love that you also just have messages to the world and important messages through your art, and then everything's so beautiful and so layered and so different i think there's a you know for us there's a, a with each other there's a deep respect and admiration for the other person not only the way they think but what they do and uh and the way that it kind of complements us and we recognize that together we can do some very cool things it's true we're, we're like the beatles we're better together <laughs> John Lennon, he's awesome, he's awesome, you know, they're, they're all great, but come on, Beatles. So, you guys, I can't wait to do this again. I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the future, and I'd love to collaborate on stuff with you guys. And I, mean, I hear you on the artist thing. It would be fun. Like, we should, we should think about how that could be a thing, because we do have an awful lot of artist portraits already, and if we were just going to... Now, what you'd have to do is get the pictures from the artists and put them on and the, edit them together and then show it. Yeah. Hey, since I've been looking at this cat the whole time, I gotta do a shout out to this artist too. This is, he's a local artist. And so this is like the Miyazaki cat bus, but he did it with Muni. And this is, a, this is the San Francisco bus line. So if you like this, his, his, it's his- a 38, cause it runs through Japan town. It runs through so, Japan town. Yeah. yeah, and he's just, he's got all these awesome like takes of uh, Miyazaki. His name is Ben Seto and he's at Skull Bunnies. I didn't look that up. So I realized after I wore this, I was like, oh, we gotta give a shout out to- <laughs> Oh, heck yeah. It's awesome. It's a great shirt. Yeah, so, yeah right? Well, let's give another sh shout out to our special guest star, Ron Turner. Thank you for coming. Hi. Say hi. hi. And um, again, go to Jason Mitchell and Stacey Ransom's website at ransommitchell.com. Check out their stuff. There's so much more work that they have up there that we weren't able to look at today and talk about. Um, that you just have to see. It's wonderful. And again, just want to thank you guys again for coming on to 111 Minute Gallery Studios, our art series, which is Thoughts on Earth. Earth.